Talofa and welcome to our television program. My name is Claire Capel. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the, Co for the American Samoa Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. This is our second taping and this taping is brought to you by the Coalition, also the American Samoa Legal Aid and Seventh-day Adventist Media. Today we're going to discuss how do you know you are in an abusive relationship, signs and symptoms. And before we begin that topic, I'd just like to introduce you to everyone who's here at the table. And we'll start with Lilio. Zalo Falava, and uh, a pleasant good morning to everyone, uh, especially to our viewers and also our partners tuning in today. Um, on behalf of the American Samoa Coalition Against Domestic Violence, just want to say um, thank you for partnering with us. And uh, today, as we are about to listen to some of our new topics in this second taping, we hope we'll take away um, something useful for our, the work that we are doing. Thank you, Lilil. And we also have our panel on our panel today, Charlene Tapuai, and she is the director of the children's ministry here at Seventh Day Adventist Church. Um, it's an opportunity to be here, and I hope what will be shared, it will be a blessing to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So our topic today, how do you know you are in an abusive relationship? Signs and symptoms. We are very honored today and pleased to introduce to you our special guest speaker, Tia Mailo. She has been working in this field for over 10 years and she has had extensive training that she's done on the mainland. She worked for a time at, a, um, at an emergency center working with children through the ages of 12 to 21 on these issues, and she also has been an advocate. So today we'd like to welcome Tia Lydia Mailo. Thank you, Claire. Um, good morning to everybody who is tuning in to our episode this morning. Uh, grateful to be here. Also, i um, excited to speak on the topic and give information that will hopefully um, reach the crowd that we are um, trying to reach to who are seeking help and going through um, these issues. Um, as Claire said, um, our topic this morning is how do you know you are in an abusive relationship? Sign and symptoms of abuse, patterns of emotional and verbal abuse. <clears throat> A lot may ask, what is considered abusive um, behavior? An abusive relationship, also known as domestic violence, intimate partner violence, or dating abuse, involves one partner attempting to cause physical, sexual, or psychological harm to the other. Now, an abusive relationship isn't just limited to physical violence. It can include sexual, emotional, and physical abuse and may involve control of your finances. So... I'm going to speak on some of the signs here to look for in an abusive relationship. Um, key signs of an abusive behavior. I'm going to begin with controlling and possessive behavior. Uh, this means uh, the perpetrator will check on the victim all the time to see where you are, what you are doing, and who you are with. Also, the perpetrator will also try to control where you go and who do you see and they may get angry if you don't do what they say. Um, <clears throat> next, I have being unreasonably jealous. So the perpetrator, they may accuse you of being unfaithful or flirting with somebody else outside of your relationship. Um, they will also isolate you from family and friends, often by behaving rudely to them. Other signs to look for is uh, put downs. Um, Perpetrator will put you down either publicly or privately uh, by attacking your intelligence, your looks, your mental health, or your capabilities. They constantly compare you unfavorably to others. They blame you for all the problems in your relationship and for their violent outbursts. 
They say things like, no, well, no one else will want you. So this is emotional abuse and verbal. Um, they want to put you down, make you feel low about yourself, have low self-esteem. Um, and that's just another tactic of them to gain control and maintain control of the relationship in the relationship or towards the victim. It makes the victim feel like, um, like I was saying, no one else will want them and they will only um, think and, and, and uh, stick with the abuser. Because the abuser will say things like, no one else will want you. I'm, you know, I'm the only one for you. And sometimes that, um, that comes in with uh, psychological abuse, making them think that they can't have anything good. That, that's, they're stuck with this and this is what they deserve. Uh, the perpetrator will also um, give threats. Um, so that is, they will yell or sulk and, de and deliberately break things that you value. Uh, they threaten to use violence against you, your family, or your pets, if you have any pets. Um, so, you know, anybody, um, even animals can be victims of abuse, um, sexual or violence, um, sexual violence or physical. Um, I have patterns of sexual and physical abuse. I'm going to start with the sexual uh, section. And patterns of sexual abuse um, looks like um, the perpetrator touching the victim against the victim's wishes. So that's molestation, harassment, um, also rape. Mm -hmm. um, attaches sexual labels to the victims. So um, using terms, excuse me, such as slut, whore, or frigid. Um, name calling, um, not very respectful terms or nice terms that you'd want to hear. Um, the perpetrator will also always demand sex. They will either force sex after beating the victim or force the victim to have sex with him or others. Moving on to the physical part, um, physical abuse is pushing, shoving, or restraining the victim, slapping or biting, throwing objects at the victim, abuses the children sexually, physically, and or emotionally. Like I said, um, anybody can be a victim and that's including the children. They will use anything to harm whoever is in their household. Um, also using weapons such as guns or knives and also physical abuse can lead to murder. Sometimes sexual abuse is hard to discuss. And um, I know physical abuse can, sometimes in the beginning, physical abuse um, isn't always physically, um, physical abuse can begin in a physically nonviolent way, but it can also start with uh, neglect or not allowing the victim to basic needs such as food, shelter, um, or hygiene items. Restricting them of, you know, their daily access. Um, um, I'm pretty sure later on they will show this, but I have a power and control wheel. And the power and control wheel shows the tactics of a perpetrator or um, what goes on in the physical and sexual um, abuse relationship. So I'm still just going to read it out. Um, I'm going to start with uh, using male privileges, treating her like a servant, making all the big decisions, acting like the master of the castle, being the one to define men's and women's roles. Next, I have using economic abuse, preventing her from getting or keeping a job, making her ask for money, giving her an allowance, taking her money, not letting her know about or have access to family income, using coercion and threats, making and or carrying out threats to do something to hurt her, threatening to leave her, to commit suicide, to report her to welfare, making her drop charges, making her do illegal things. Um, Another tactic the perpetrator will use is using intimidation, 
making her afraid by using looks, actions, gestures, smashing things, destroying her property, abusing pets, and displaying weapons. Again, the perpetrator's whole goal and main purpose is to gain and maintain, maintain control of the victim. Next, I have using emotional abuse, putting her down, making her feel bad about herself, calling her names, making her think she's crazy, playing mind games, humiliating her, making her feel guilty. Um, another term that is familiar and like popular in the physical and domestic, um, domestic and sexual world with using emotional abuse is gaslighting, which is um, making her think she's crazy, you know, just making her think that whatever she's going through isn't what she's going through. Um, humiliating her and also making her feel guilty next i have using isolation controlling what she does who she sees and talks to what she reads where she goes limiting her outside involvement using jealousy to justify actions sorry minimizing denying and blaming making light of the abuse and not taking her concerns about it seriously saying the abuse didn't happen shifting responsibility for abusive behavior, saying she caused it. So um, the perpetrator will also play the blaming game, uh, blaming the victim for his actions, why he uh, is abusive uh, towards her, um, saying that, you know, if she frustrates her, then that's why he hits her. That's why he slaps her. That's why he calls her names. Mm -hmm. um, last, I have using children. So... Also, that's like a leverage, you know, by threatening um, the victim, by harming their loved ones, breaking things that are important to them or valuable to them, um, using children, making her feel guilty about the children, using the children to relay <coughs> messages, using visitations to harass her, threatening to take the children away. Um, these are some a few things you might feel in an abusive relationship or you may ask yourself is or say you know as you're going through it you would say my partner isn't violent all the time things will get better it's so confusing i'm sure it's a one-off <coughs> and basically that means you know this is your first relationship and you know dealing with domestic um, or sexual abuse you just think maybe it's just a one-time thing and it won't happen again um, also the victim may feel, um, it's their fault. Maybe it's my fault that I, you know, didn't do this or that, um, thinking that the blame is on them and they have the responsibility to make things better, to, um, make the perpetrator, you know, like, oh, it's my fault that I didn't do this. So he's acting this way. And then last we have, um, the victim feeling that they are scared and don't know what will happen once they leave them. And throughout the domestic and sexual abuse relationship, this is probably one of the most scariest moments is actually making the decision to leave the perpetrator. And that's also when the perpetrator um, gets even more aggressive because they feel like they're losing grip of the situation. The, um, not having the control. So they will go to extreme measures. And that's where it gets scary because once they leave, you know, the perpetrator will hunt them down, do anything. Um, also, um, you know, stalking or hacking their devices, where to find their location. Um, and before I head towards the end of my presentation, I would like to ask my panel here if anybody has any questions for me. Yeah. Well, it seems like uh, there's a whole lot of topics and I'm sure each topic we have a question yeah. like um, my question on the economic abuse because mm -hmm. as we're going through our victims coming in to our services, it seems like it's very common that they the abused woman does not work. You know, the majority are unemployed. I mm -hmm. mean, so 
it, it come to mind, I'm thinking how, you know, this woman being abused is really in, in a situation where she's stuck with the decision, I cannot leave my abuser. He is, you know, my provider, my breadwinner, you know. So just making that initial move to mm -hmm. to it it's a whole big um decision to make like mm -hmm. how am I gonna feed my kids? How I'm gonna take them to school, you know, how are we gonna survive? Where are we gonna move to? So, you know, this is where I'm saying, you know, whoever's listening out there, that's where our program, the transitional housing, it's six months to two years, we feel that's enough time for the the abused person to make that decision. You don't have to pay any bills, mm -hmm. you know, don't have to look for that home. And you also have the services offered to you. You have the legal aid and, you know, other partners mm -hmm. like the SDA, you know, yeah. um, the religious... Uh, our religious uh, helpers. So, yeah. you know, I just wanted to touch on that listening uh, yeah. to our presenter today. I think that was great. And the, Teresa, maybe you want to translate that for our Samoan speakers? Now to offer for my full song, a little tattoo. Sweet, we are there for him. Ta 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 ya itu a inga saun a sawanga a tonu fo e o le tele e le mala mala mai me ala tu tu pu tonu a inga o la ya e fa pe a le tina ya o la e le le ma to tu a o la e sao o na o le tu langa o le va fe a ngai o le ta mama le tina ta u si o a inga ya e me se fo e fa na ya le wa fa fo nga mai le ni ta ya o le na wa to la u la wi na an tu el ta to ta ta e o le na fa ima ma sweet o fia e fa mal malama ni si o o sa wa nga o lo fia nga ya e le nga ta iti na ma fa na u teine ya a o fa na u fo ya po nti ma ta ma fo yo sa wa ina o le fisili la wo tu la i mai i le tu la nga o fa mal malama ina e e fo i sa wa nga e ta u e ta u o sa wa nga e le mo fa ya e o na ma wa e le tina a se a vanoa e mala mala mai tu langa o meta o tupe, ia po o a fo i mea fa manuianga o lo o mau e tonu o le ainga ona e li miti le i loa e le tina o mea la e tupu e tau ave o mai le tama lo na winga e le ai se ava noa o ave e le tina e mala mala mai i tu langa o meta o tupe e le e tango fo il tina i ni tupe e fesili a le tina i mea o mai le tama lo na winga Ele ai se a ia tu tu sal ta mama li tina i le ta pena ina o la ta ua inga o le fisili la u tu la i mai. O le sili a sa ua, a e masalo e le o mal malama i e tina o la e manatu tina o la e le lei. E la e manatu le tina i a fa ia e manatu li tama e le fa i loa. Ia o la e ato o toa i a e ngaloa i. Ia o le na e e i ai o le sili na au tu o le sa ua anga. Ona ele e ali ali ai ele o ngalu e fata sil ta mama nti na intu langa o le fata so so ina o le muta fai o ya ai nga o le tele o tato nti na ai o lo sa wa ina ele ba ai nga o nti na ele fai ngalu e nga ya ele o ya ifo ila na ai no no fo il fale ma ta pena le ai nga ma ma me fa pena o le la o fa mama la ma lo ma to ta ita i o ila e a o nga ai la ma to o o na nga Ona, if a five way a setting now, well, an owner, but way low or low sawa ina. I will feel a same matter, a same fear, more same alo long or the mafo fowl. Ya, or low or matto or long or low ya, matto tesa ilia, and fally little mow. Ea, my little water sanger, 
e ma fai una tongi e le poloka la ma pe a fai e kan e se mai setina po setina lo ye ma ni fa na o eno no fo ai ya ma tsa tsa pe na ai se se o langa e a ma tsa ai o na tsoi fo fo mo se si la sang fo ai o le fa ma la ma na se e tsoi fa pula au ili ili le tsu langa le a fa su ma tsa mai tsa ai ya li ti ya ona o afa ina ya lo o afa ina ai ya tsu langa o ai ma i mea tsa tsu pe like I said um, earlier in my in the Amatanga uh, presentation, failo atu matau atu ole abusive relationship. It's not eleli niti fapia ole fasawa inga ole fasili ma a ole abusive relationship also includes le controlling or ole tupe ole emotional ole e o fo i e tele lava e power mele o lo ma sani e polo e e tatu tangata ole ole fasawa ina ole fasi male male sexual abuse um you know forcing uh rape and molestation but domestic violence um covers actually abuse covers a lot of areas and like i mentioned earlier which is sexual emotional and physical abuse and that's where like Teresa explained, you know, some women may be confused, and in the power of con the power and control wheel, it um, kind of breaks it down. So yeah, malama lama e tatu tangata ime lo tutu pui tutonu lato a inga po le fenga wo um. So for instance, the using the male privilege, fa pe o le tamale a inga tangata lo um you know leading a le le a inga e e fa inga fa pe you know male has more rights than the female and he has control of the situation which is making you know the mother of the family or the female in the relationship feel like a she doesn't have an importance she doesn't have a voice so that's where he you know <clears throat> the perpetrator making all the big decisions and also using economic abuse which is like you know <clears throat> i'm the man of the house I'm the bread earner and what you make comes to me is stripping her of her basic needs. Yeah. The perpetrator or the abuser that who is keeping everything, um, the access to everything. So, you know, and also like Liliu mentioned, some of them may feel, you know, most of these women who are abused, or Tsangata Vai Vai Lima, and then Monga Wenga and Mfenga, you know, Ngalue, no for Fale Tosid Fa Nao Malayanga, while the man goes out and does whatever he wants to do. So, I hope I answered that question for you. <laughs> yes. um, so what we're going to do right now is just take a short break and then we'll be back with you, Shirley. Okay. okay. join us on our discussion here. We're talking about abusive relationships and how you can become aware of the signs and symptoms. And we're going to continue on. Um, Shireen, you had a question for Lydia. Yes. Um, thank you. With um, the Seventh-day Adventist um, initiative with the violence or the stopping uh, violence, we call it the end it now. And this year's focus only 
a power of abuse. Mm -hmm. And one of the key factors that I keep on hearing with your sharing is that there's power. And then my question is, it comes with the position that you have that power, Mm -hmm. but you are abusing that power. And at the different levels, you see that power being abused. But the target that I want to focus on is within our homes and then within our churches, because we will come to a point that say it's a disbelief that it's happening in the church. It's a disbelief that it, it's happening in this certain kind of family. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it is happening. Right. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask, so um, what is your take on the abuse with that comes with power. And then in connection with that, because this is where culture involves, and that position also um, takes its part. And then again, it's the power that they abuse, and, and it becomes a, a, a problem within our society and in our community. Um, one of the things that I wanna echo is what Lilu uh, mentioned, is taking the responsibility is how you, it's the ability to respond to this kind of abuse. Ah. So my question is, um, what's your take of with regards to position in connection to culture and where abuse fits in? Thank you for the question. Um, so if I sound what? Oh, it's a good one. I was feeling that I was going to be able to do it. I was going to be to do it. Sawangai emasa ema woma itulanga ole ole power male avia mata ita ayo se ainga fa ita ita inga pelta ma oye ole ulo ole ainga oye ole ita ita ayo le ainga ole na power la fa ita ma ole o avia ma la ema fa ya iyo na awala ma iya iya ni sawanga itonu o ainga elenga ta elenga ngana ole fa o ngaina ya awa mionga fo yo lo fai e ma fai ai ona control pe ma wale avanoa e tapu ni ai le avanoa monitina po le fa na fo e fa matala ai ni na ona mani ya fa ina ola to ma fa fa ola ole sila le a tu langa o sa wa nga wa le a ni mai ai po le a se tu langa ile e talofia ngai malefo fuanga pe afa pe ya fa ina ima ma o o ai se tulanga o le tato wanga nu o le ale tulanga o le anga nu o i i tuanga sa wanga fa pe pe afa o ngale power po le malo sianga o le tsamaloa po le tina fo it tonu o ainga e sa wa ina ia la bona Olo o sa wa ina ila ngon na wile nga te li tina mo fa na u iya. A o ni si fo ita nga ta olo o lata lata ane iya ipo o fale fai nga luenga po o tutonu e ka le siya olo o wa iya iya tu langa. Tainla Vateri say thank you for the question. This is a very good question and your question on people taking advantage of the power mm-hmm. or you yeah. know using like 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 the family may feel that it's a norm because it's mm-hmm. the father mm-hmm. he does yeah, the final thing the but not knowing that there's symptoms of abuse with what Teresa was saying ole, ole ngangana, ole amio, right that you feel that it's inappropriate but because it's a it's it, it becomes a norm that they feel it's not abusive it's right. being told mm-hmm. of what they to accept do. it yes, yes yeah okay. it's a yeah so <clears throat> Power, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to speak a little bit on it. You know, a person who um, who possesses power uh, is in a good place. Um, some, some of them may take advantage of that. You know, it can be good or bad. So um, power in a relationship is... Like, of course, with that, power comes manipulation and intimidation. Um, So manipulating the person or taking advantage of the person's love to make them think, um, like I said, you know, um, maybe it's my fault, you know, well, why for you? So the person who has a loving heart 
may not know their limits or their boundaries. Oh, they think, you know, like in the Bible says, or just to refer, like you're talking on our culture, you know, tough love or keep loving no matter how much, keep you know, forgiving. keep mm -hmm. forgiving. Oh, mm -hmm. or, 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 that right. seems to yeah. be the thing in a, but like in, in the previous episode, we also talked about, you know, forgiving and in examples of like, you know, one of our um, partners, Legal Aid, took somebody to go to court and get a restraining order and ran into a Faifiao and the Faifiao's advice was, you know, forgive. But it's just like, mm -hmm. you don't know the depths of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing is they make you feel like, okay, if I just forgive, I'll be okay. Uh, well, they make the situation seem light, lighter than mm -hmm. what it truly is. And then people... Um, just end up giving up because they don't have the right help or they haven't come across the right help. People give them the wrong um, advice. And power, to me, um, it seems that power, the person in control and has power tends to make them feel more comfortable in taking action that fosters their personal um, their personal goals. Uh, and it may switch their behavior, which is like uh, more likely they begin to negotiate touch other people and take initiative when it's unclear whether um, such behavior is permitted. So manipulation and intimidation is also sometimes they are scared. So they just deal with it. You know, mm -hmm. and like I said, um, they just give up and then they're conditioned to think, okay, I'm just going to deal with it. Forgive. And it'll be okay, you know, God is on my side, but it's not. It takes more than that, you know. It's like, you know, there's a saying, love isn't enough. You know, it's not just love. Just because somebody tells you they love you, then they love you. It takes action. And I think we just need more people to advocate for people who, you know, you know, to take action. So we need to push them and break the silence and break the um what we're conditioned to believe um you know that the man in power is who we listen to and i mean you're talking about cultural i feel like that's just a whole nother subject because <laughs> yeah. right you know in between yeah. the lines there's so much abuse in the culture <laughs> you know and we may not know it like you know in things like the church the religion where they want us to give money or if you give me money i will take care you know things like that but everybody plays a part in you know in the abusive system and some are dangerous but i hope i was able to you know um answer your question um if you want me to stress more about it like i can can I say something about um, this question? Sure. Um, I'm grateful for this question um, relating to power, power control. Mm -hmm. I feel the church on its own, since uh, we mentioned, has its own power structure, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's up to us, the church goers, we will know when it's a, a wrong call or mm -hmm. it's a, an abusive call. Or, and but it's good to discuss because no one has one right answer. In the cultural system, where the Matai and his um, family setting, we also have that power structure mm -hmm. that I'm sure um, those in the families feel they are abused every day, being told to give fala love and monies. That's an abuse sometimes. But we don't see it because it's the norms, right? right? If I live on the land for free, give you a share. In our family setting too, you know, uh, we all grew up in a different setting. Like as Fife Al's children, you know, whether we liked it or not, we had to go church. Mm -hmm. You know, no say, no answer back, no, okay. you know, so... I'm just yeah. trying to say, yeah. I think um, we will have to discuss separately on all those on different those. Mm -hmm. um, areas because it's all yeah. different power yeah. structure. Yeah, and there's certainly yeah. 
we can have some of those discussions be their own Maybe. session. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Lady, I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. Corinne. So we're talking about this power thing and abuse. Can you just talk a little bit on how, let's say, as a child, you grow up in abusive family? I mean, and maybe it isn't even a, abusive, but that's the way things were mm -hmm. like 40 years ago. So when I was a young kid, how I grew up today, there's parts of that that might be considered abusive. But how does that go when you're in that situation as a child and then now you become an adult? Are there implications to you then as adult that you're more accepting of abuse? You know, that you're not going to see it because it was a child. It's the way you grew up. So you grow up as adult thinking, oh, now I'm dating guys and they're treating me this way that it's okay. You, yeah. Okay. It's a, well, <clears throat> that's a very good question, Claire. Thank you for the question. Um, you know, me and Lily had a similar discussion about that um, earlier this morning and um, the trauma, the impact on mm -hmm. You know, say as a child, you've witnessed your father, um, you know, beating your mother and then they they see it all the time. So they also become victims and they're affected by the trauma. And, you know, in there have been some research shown that whoever has been dealing with that, you know, the the childhood trauma. You know, mm -hmm. what they've experienced as children growing up into adults. It's either it can affect them in a way of like if the family doesn't talk about things like that growing up, mm -hmm. it's going to stay like that. They're going to they're going to okay. actually like continue that behavior, you know. Mm -hmm. And but if growing up, they've seeked help and to realize, you know, the awareness of what they've been through may be different. Yeah. But sometimes it's hard to break the cycle you know what i mean mm -hmm. it, it's a continuation yeah. of this cycle unhealthy habits where children will pick it up and may not understand what's going on and then eventually realize later on that they are also doing the same thing without knowing it mm -hmm. and they may be accepting of that behavior because they're just like oh i'm just used to it because i've witnessed it and i've been a victim of it or you know some people will want to um have a change yeah but most likely there are more people to actually continue the cycle than actually break it and break it okay Teresa, do you want to yeah i you know so if i'll pop a little too long and if silly i would a little too long only a final my for forward some entity my turn or i know you was a why number all over a year yes um you can see this in the school sit, uh, setting. Mm -hmm. When I was working as a counselor, you can you see and you know for sure the impact of a violent family or abusive family. Right. The kids continue that patterns from home to the school yes. or to wherever they go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from there, we know for sure that they have problems and they're, they're calling out for help. Right. It's not because they wanted to do or they wanted to abuse their partners and kids around them. But that's one sign and symptoms that us teachers and counselors know that these kids need help. Yes. They're calling out for help. They don't mm -hmm. do it because they want to do it. Yes. And because of this situation in the family setting, and this is how the impact of that to their life. And um, with our Samoan family, we have so much pride that you're not supposed to tell. Right. Because every time we call them in and we ask them if they need help, if there's something wrong, and they were never revealed because of that pride that it's been teach and taught in the family not to say anything. Yes. <laughs> so we have to break the silence and let them know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to translate um, that? Oh, I don't think she's okay. But it's okay. Okay. I, I, I totally agree with you, Teresa. Thank you for saying that. You know, sometimes they do act out and that is a sign of help, screaming of help. And, um, you know, they're in distress. They don't know why, you know, all they know is just what they see is when the parent is frustrated. This is how they act is they beat on, you know, the mother and then they beat on the children. And then later on, you know, that's just like, well, this is just normal for our family. Yeah. And accept it. manipulation by saying, 
you know, I only did that because I love you. Tough love. You right, know, it makes me right, think yeah. like, yeah. you know, because I have friends today who are like, oh, I'm glad I was raised that way. But it's like, but to what extent do you, you know, accept it? Like when it's a form of abuse and when you're just being, um, you know, uh, correcting your behavior. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, right. But <clears throat> um, I see this is what I'm saying. Um, we need people to notice and see the problems, you know, and understand, you know, some people will say, oh, why is he acting out? Oh, well, he comes from a bad family, but not mm -hmm. knowing, you know, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has a, dif a dysfunctional <laughs> family. We come from broken right. homes, you know, nobody's yeah. perfect. But I think another important thing that we need to be is more trauma informed and um, careful with like our words and what we say and what we think, because we, we never know what the person's going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Verbal abuse. Yes. Yeah. Charlene, did you have a question or you want to comment? Oh, yes. Um, with regards to us advocating that we have the help, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we need to educate our children, our people of the symptoms mm -hmm. of someone being abused, because that will break the norms of us thinking that what's going on at home or wherever, it's, it's mm -hmm. normal. Uh, mm -hmm. So education side of things is very important and also um when it's known that there is an abuse um restoration is very important right you know building the self-esteem building that one yes. uh, person right. that is a victim so yeah i wanted yeah. To just to touch base on that i and agree on what Teresa was saying you know i i would just say us victims you know teachers parents friends we all Everybody. have uh, a big you know we have a lot of work to do because there's been so much and there's a lot of oppression and you know and like you said education and it's hard because some people just don't want to know or deal with what they have put away you know but it's still there and they don't want to deal with it but that's it and i think right. this is where this awareness um is useful mm -hmm. right um yeah. So that we can make uh, make known our mm -hmm. services, what's available out there that these victims can tap into, right. and they can know it's not the norms right. to um, be abusive mm -hmm. um, and to accept, um, you know, being abused by another person. Right. So, um, yeah, I feel uh, this trying. is why this conversation is very much needed. Yes, okay. indeed. So we're gonna go ahead and take another break on that note and we'll be right back. Welcome back to our program. We are talking about signs and symptoms of relationships. And Liliu, you had a question for Tia? Uh, yes, I just wanted to ask if identifying roles within a family setting is a good thing or not. Ole Fisilila, what's your name? My Ole Faunga Inalia, or Avanoi Ton, or Ainga Itu Langao, or Mutafa Yoi. Suma. Thank you for the question. Um, 
since we are on the topic of, you know, how do you know if you are in an abusive relationship? And your question on identifying the roles of the couple or in the relationship. Um, sometimes it can be a good thing and sometimes it can be a bad thing. Well, to me, I think, um, you know, building a healthy relationship, um, you need, um, it's good that you have um, equality, um, making your partner feel equal to you, same as you, because there is nobody above you or better than you. And um, building relationship equality is an essential move in your relationship as it leads to a better connection, where um, promoting a balance in your relationship gives room for both partners to play their part um, well and freely. You know, so if you, you tell me like, oh, this is all you can do, you know, limiting your partner's um, purpose or um, making them feel less of themselves, you know, creates um, issues with that person within themselves think, thinking, oh, I'm not good enough or I can't do this. And a woman's role is just to stay home and take care of the kids that I um, can't do anything um, above that or I can't. They, you know, it also lowers their self esteem as to this is all I'm here to do. I can't do anything else. And the man plays the part. He gets to do whatever he wants to do. So the disadvantage of that is, and whatever she sees um, the male doing, the head of the family, she's just going to accept it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Condition to think this is what this relationship is. This is what a marriage relationship or this is what a boyfriend and girlfriend does. Whatever relationship you're in, they're just conditioned to think that um, they can't do any better. That this is what, but it's like, who are you to tell me what I'm to do and who I am and, you know, my capabilities? Um, like I mentioned earlier in my presentation, is the put downs. Uh, so, your the person is attacking your intelligence, looks, your mental health, and your capabilities. So that causes a lot of issues. I think, you know, the outcome of that isn't good. It's more bad than good. And I hope I answered that question for you. I think when people are treated... Can I, go ahead. Can I add up to that? Um, this is where we, we go back to our uh, family roles in our own family uh, with a family that we know for sure in our own culture that the man is the head of the family. Yes. And there is a role for a woman too. So before we can even go further, we already know the situation in our family, in our household. But that doesn't mean that we go back to the power. Right. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that he has the power <laughs> to overrule everything that is going on in the household. As for a woman is part it's a weak part of the family, and they have that power to treat them like nothing. Right. It's it's you have your roles. Yeah. It's been identified your roles in your family, but that doesn't mean you can take over your role to be <laughs> abusive and do whatever you want to do with that power. That we we did talk about that power and and everything. So. To add on to Teresa's um, power comment, I want to, I'd like to share that, you know, one of the ways power influences people is by affecting their thoughts and the way they process information. So um, people in the position of power um, think in more abstract terms, like they also process information in a simplified way which can lead to more stereotyping. Oh, that's mm. the term, stereotypes. And um, a heightened focus on central versus uh, details of a situation. So the person with power will th is only going to worry about themselves and will think lightly of the other person's situation who's struggling. They think, oh, okay, well, too bad for them. But, you know, I'm here, so I shouldn't worry about them. <laughs> but, yeah. Any, if you have any more questions. So can you kind of, Lydia, can you just tell us if we think we're in 
an abusive relationship, what sort of help just generally or what should be our first steps? Um, <clears throat> well, in this situation, it's not always easy. Like I expressed earlier, it's hard to come across um, the right help and the right people who will lead you to where you need to be. And part of that is trusting your intuition and your instincts on if the person is actually helping you. So I think um, part of that is also validating how you feel. Okay, you know, is this good or bad? And do I trust this person to help me? I follow on going oil, so follow on. Then don't. Uh, and maybe you can ask, seek help elsewhere. You never know who can help you. You can seek help professionally through our programs, you know, like through the Seventh Day Advances program, uh, End It. And also there's us, the Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. We have advocates who can advocate for you. And then we have our partners like ASLA, who provides legal aid, Catholic services for counseling and therapy sessions. Also, um, um, other help that we have, uh, like um, Teen Challenge, you know, helping the youth. But I think if you're struggling with making your way or finding your way to the right help, you know, ask somebody who you trust, you know, your family. Um, tell them, ask them, talk to them about what you've been dealing with. And maybe they can, because usually the person looking from the outside has a better view of what you're going through because the person is still confused and trying to process what they're going through. And like I said, um, um, use your, trust your intuition and your um, instincts on what you think is right, who you think is giving you the right help or not. Ola <laughs> that we can be able to provide for you if you need it. Call us and we'll help you. Um, Thank you, Teresa. Okay. I do. just want to add on to what <coughs> Teresa mentioned about confidentiality. Um, that is um, the most important thing in our field of work is uh, keeping the confidentiality between us and the victim. You know, some people may feel, you know, they have too much pride or embarrassment and that is one of our things, but also for us to be able to keep the confidentiality, the victim has to meet us halfway too, because that is also their responsibility in keeping themselves safe and for us to um, be successful in keeping them safe. So that's why we also provide um, safe housing, you know, minimum of six months to two years, depending on the victim's progress, our participants' progress, or also if they follow our guidelines. Um, these resources are very important and, you know, not everybody has access to it. Mm -hmm. And I just um, would like to urge our community to please take advantage of these resources because we're here and you need help and you never know. You know, sometimes it's it's hard to make the, the best decision for yourself because you've been in the dark for so long. But 
I would say trust your instincts and your intuition. If you feel that it's right, then go for it. But that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. And on that note, um, Shirlene, can you explain to us a little bit about the programs that Seventh Day is doing? Yes. Um, with the Seventh Day Adventist Church, the program is called In It Now, and it's a collective er effort of seven departments, which is the Children's Ministry, the Health, Education, Family Life, Women's Ministry, and a Ministerial um, Association. Mm -hmm. So in that collective effort, one of the target uh, programs out in the churches <coughs> is to educate people of what abuse is and what are the symptoms and what are the experiences and what are the ways to help so it's very important to educate people with regards to um, violence and then the second outreach are what are ways to help if there are families or a certain individual that are in this situation and yeah. they are able to reach out so um, wherever the seventh day adventist church is near to your home and if you're in that situation you are able to um, contact uh, the pastor to start with and the leaders of the church, and they are able to help you in that situation. Tangata nu ya mbisi la vale kale sia itu langa fa pene ya o le ale a wale mfayona la to apa tu ye so so ani e o lo fa sa wina fa sa waina ito no la to waina ye fa pe nga lwe nga manu ya e pe ona ya e le ene nao o le initiative ale e kale sia fitu so that's uh, basically an overview of this program that we have Great. That's great work you guys are doing. Mm. Thank you. No, very nice. Yes. Mm. So we are coming to a closing of our program. Um, on that note, I wanted to thank Lydia for being here and being our guest speaker. And do you have any last comments you want to impart? No, um, I think we had a very good discussion here. Um, I feel good about it. I thank everybody for their time to be able to be here to uh, make this a uh, successful turnout for our, um, part of our outreach and you know our awareness. And this is very important. You know, like uh, she, uh, Charlene, Charlene has mentioned, is educating our people and um, awareness of our program. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I think we've. Uh, move forward in our goal accomplishments here with this program i thank you all for coming and next month we will have dr audrey tar from she's a gynecologist at lbj um, she is here on a mission with the latter-day saints she'll be our guest speaker next month um Therese, can you close out for us bring us our Samoan translation and I apologize for my coughing I'm sorry I've had a cold like so many of us here for the last three weeks I apologize for that too though yeah only on the email and on five day or why and then they say hello and father smile tattoo yeah and then five phone tattoo more here my phone phone one day more in the air so if I saw more too long I did all my to a while now I love for my son more Matu Fafta ya tuwa ile sunga ile faifi avya lupeta kwa ii ya amali mmalu wa linei fale fasa la lau wa mfayo na fasa la lau wina atuwa ili na ipo loka lama ole manatuwa ya madufa mwe mwe ya avya na ipo loka lama ya faima po loka lama ya faala utele hai mafisoso ani hai mwoni isi ulo ufia maole fisoso ani ya ole ne ya la fasa la lau wata uwa le hope chano Ya o se ingo e sili o na mana ya ma au lelei lo o ma fau fau o na o le tulanga o lo o ya ili fa moe moe ya o lo o ma tu safasa la wa tu ili fale 
fasa le lau olo o yai le fa mo e boe o a umanga lue nga e fa ye le tangat a umasanga lue nga ya ne fo ile o le bi inga ile atu a ile o ita atu a nga le ile atu a ila fa fonga anga sa mo ya o le a fo se upu a se nga nga na o le ita uta mali i ilo fa fonga malo finangalo malu a be fa le mangalo ita atu o le fa na o le atu a a ye manu vi a te le lau fa sa u sa unga sa mo a sa atu to e fe ilo a e ile masina o mo a mo a pe a ta la fe a ngai malo finangalo o le atu a te se ma a so a le Oleh amat untuk fasal lau tuai, ia menuai lau fasal sahaja dia afiafi tu fasal.